Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Game Video video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. And we're going to focus our attention in this video on AMD, specifically an interview that Lisa Su recently took part in with the uh, website and YouTube channel PC Games Hardware. Now, I'm not going to go through all of the interview here. Instead, I'm going to take a few of the key quotes and pieces of information and dissect it. 2019 has undoubtedly been one of the milestones for AMD in terms of the product announcements that we've already seen. And 2019 could also be a pivotal year for the company in general. It has the ability with its roadmap to put Intel under a lot of pressure. It remains to be seen how competitive Ice Lake will be, but in terms of the Coffee Lake refresh anyway, let's just be honest here. I don't think Intel have a prayer to compete. As for Nvidia, yes, the RTX series of GPUs is impressive in terms of the technology, but they are also rather expensive. And with Radeon 7 and presumably Navi, we can expect AMD to put a lot of pressure on NVIDIA in the mid-range, particularly if the GPUs end up costing, let's say, around 300 US dollars and put out equivalent performance of the RTX 2060 or closer to the RTX, RTX excuse me, 2070, which is personally what I believe they're probably going to end up performing like. But let's start things out with some of the comments concerning Radeon 7, because Lisa Sue actually said something rather interesting at the start of the interview. She said that Vega 7NM or Vega 20 or whatever you want to call it was always intended for gamers, but they actually escalated the speed that the card would be produced for gamers thanks to a cache influx. Not only has it been incredibly helpful for the graphics division, but on the software side of things, it's allowed uh, AMD to support developers with optimizations on the software side. Now, we certainly saw lack of optimization when Ryzen first launched, which is a couple of reasons, at least in my opinion. The first is that, well, let's just be honest, it was a brand new architecture. And the fact that it did have that increased core count, plus a rather unique architecture at launch, meant that certain games, not all, but certain games was just, well, not ideal with its performance. But subsequent updates have improved that immeasurably. I have given this story before, but I'm going to tell you one more time. It's quite funny because back when I was first reviewing Ryzen, I actually was given a board and a processor, and I conducted all of the tests, and then Microsoft released a software update for Windows, as well as several developers released software updates for their games. And obviously AMD also were releasing Agasa updates. So I performed a little review and then I was like, uh, okay, I better test to see how well uh, AMD are performing now that we've got these updates. And I basically had to throw out all the old results and reconduct all of the tests because there was such a huge shift in performance. I've actually got a video uh, talking about that on the original Ryzen launch, so I'll try to remember to link that into the video description. But the too long didn't read is that AMD have come a long way in terms of software and one of the reasons and support and one of the reasons of course for this is the cash influx. And if you believe the rumors that Forbes as well as a couple of other websites have reported the shortage of cash actually really hurt the development of Vega. And apparently, uh, a lot of the cash that AMD had went to not only the Zen development, but also to Navi. And one of the reasons that Navi got a lot more loving, of course, is because it is forming the basis of the next generation consoles. Lisa Su also went on record yet again concerning ray tracing, because people were prodding her and saying, hey, you got any more of that ray tracing information? All she said is that they are working further on the software and hardware side. So that's quite interesting. She's used that term several times now, hardware and software. So it's obvious that she's not misspeaking there. I'm going to be curious whether it's going to be an extension of asynchronous computer. Or eventually, they're going to have their own hardware, much like uh, NVIDIA did with ray tracing cores, or whether that's going to be further in the future, exactly how that's going to migrate. But... Ray tracing, she has said, is an important technology and AMD will embrace it. She didn't use that word verbatim, but they will embrace it 
but right now they feel it's one of several important technologies. So I will look forward to the next couple of years because personally speaking, I think ray tracing is really cool. Uh, I just wonder how long it's going to take for games to become pretty normal in their adoption of it. And I do have some uh, questions of whether the next generation consoles will support this. In particular, uh, Scarlet because obviously Microsoft with DXR, technically you can run ray tracing on that. Then again, also you could run Vulkan on the next generation PlayStation. We don't really know what's going on with its app is. So it's basically, it's gonna be very curious over the next couple of years, exactly what technologies do take off and what technologies kind of fall on their face. Okay, let's move away from graphics. What about the processors? In previous interviews, she has said, that you might have noticed the additional space on the package. And you've all seen the photos or the videos where you've got the iodi and of course you've got the eight Zen two cores. And it doesn't take a particular genius to say, hey, <laughs> there looks like there's more space there. For you got any more of those cores maybe? And she has said that they will. She has stated that specifically there will be more processor cores. But she did quickly add, I'm not gonna tell you how many more cores. From a personal standpoint, I doubt it's going to be 10 because that would be kinda of odd for a package. I'm gonna say we're gonna see 12 minimum. My personal bet is it's going to be 16. That's what a lot of people have said on the, in the industry and also what my one of my sources anyway has said. Um, but we'll have to wait to see what the clock speeds are like with that because she also went further and gave a little bit of clock speed information. Now, this is not the clock speed information that possibly you're going to want because she's not saying that, you know, the 3700 is going to run at these many gigahertz. Instead, what she has said is that they are still trying to nail down the clock speed of the parts. And this is not just for Ryzen. It also goes for Epic. She also said that there is still some fine tuning to be done, although didn't specify exactly what that is, whether it's going to be more software side of things or hardware side of things or BIOS side of things or a mixture of both. She then went on to say that that's the reason that they have not settled on the month of release yet. Regular viewers of the channel will know that I have spoken to people in the industry and my sources have told me that the release date of these processes will be about the midpoint of the year uh, and the third quarter of the year for Threadripper 3000. And Lisa Sue actually said that this is most likely going to be the case. She went on record and has said that for the Ryzen 3000 series CPUs anyway, they are targeting the middle of the year, but they have not got a specific month in mind yet. They are just targeting that window. And the reason behind that is because they are still working on the final clock speeds of the processors. And this does tie up rather nicely to what my sources have told me uh, before CES and something that I post as an exclusive. I was told that currently AMD do not have exact specifications of the processors. They know roughly the uh, performance targets they're going with. And of course they know details like, okay, well, we're going with this many processor cores. And they also know that they're targeting 3200 megahertz minimum for the memory support, as well as some other details that we all know about, like the improvements on the, uh, you know, the back end of the processor and improvements to floating point and, you know, things we've discussed umpteen in one time. So I'm not going to drown this video in those details. But in terms of the specifics like clock speed, they are still trying to figure out exactly what they can squeeze out of the process itself. That is TSMC's 7NM process. And it's not just like, well, this is the maximum clock speed they can run at. They also have to figure out like, you know, what about yields? What What's going to be very profitable for them? Lisa Sue did say that the whole point of CES 2019 with the demos they've shown was not to show what their processes are capable of at the highest end. Instead, what they wanted to do is show that currently with an eight core, 16 thread in a like for like comparison, they are competitive. And that to me is probably a sign that Intel are a bit concerned. And I know I said this in a previous video, but I'm not surprised that some 
details of Ice Lake are starting to leak, like the benchmarks that we saw a couple of days ago. And my personal opinion is that we're probably going to see a few more because from a marketing slash PR standpoint, sometimes leaks equal good. And I do feel that companies, from my experience anyway, do put leaks out there simply because it helps build up anticipation. It helps build up hype. And yes, I believe that AMD did learn quite a lot from the hype, from the anticipation of the original Vega 64 and 56 launch, and they are probably learning to manage expectations a little better. There were other sources that we have heard from that have said that, well, AMD are very confident internally with all of the parts, whether it's Navi, whether it's Epic, whether it's Fred Ripper 3000, whether it's, I'm gonna stop there. But what they don't want to do is to say, well, here are our performance targets and then fail to meet those because let's just be really silly and say that they outperform it by 25% at the same price. But they say that before the launch, they were targeting to outperform it by 30% and they missed those performance targets. The headlines are not now AMD beats uh, the 9900K, the same process of course for half the price for 25%. Instead, it's more, well, you know, AMD did not actually meet the performance targets that they were uh, telling us that they would be hitting. So I believe that AMD in this instance are probably taking about the smartest approach possible. And now here's some opinions of my own. And warning, these are opinions. I think that AMD's comeback over the past couple of years has been one of the most miraculous and probably impressive comebacks in tech history. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for this. One, AMD did bet big. Uh, I couldn't imagine what would have happened if Zen had been a failure. Uh, we can all make guesses as to what would have happened. But there's also the fact that Intel have been caught with its pants down. I don't think anyone, even the biggest Intel fan, would say that they has pushed as much as what they should have. There's not only the 10 and M thing, but even if you look at the architecture itself, you know, Skylake over Haswell was a pretty big jump. You know, we've got additional memory bandwidth and some other changes. KB Lake to Skylake, and then Coffee Lake, you know, it was pretty nice. And then we got a Coffee Lake refresh, but architecturally, it's very similar. We've got some additional processor cores, but we can probably really utterly thank AMD for that. NVIDIA, Pascal probably gave one of the most significant GPU jumps we've seen in some time. Maxwell to Pascal, I think sometimes people forget how impressive Pascal was. And I do believe Turing, from the perspective of ray tracing and DLSS and all of this other cool stuff, has a lot of potential. But in terms of a standard rasterization performance, it's nowhere near the jump of what we saw with Pascal. So what AMD have is an opportunity. AMD have managed to be very close to taking 30% of the market share by another year or so. They're gonna really put pressure on Intel uh, in the CPU space. And in the server space, Opteron, which of course was their big server processors back in the day, it was very competitive. I mean, they were taking market share from Intel left, right, and center, but then they just got left behind and Intel had basically gobbled up almost all of the market share when it came to servers to themselves. I mean, I don't remember what the market share was, but I think it was like 99% Intel or something ridiculous. You can pretty much say, oh, look, there's a token uh, AMD processor there, and it just because we've not retired it yet. So now things are getting very different. And Epic, it's not perfect. There are some things it's weaker in, although we're basing that on the current generation Epic. We don't know exactly how Rome is going to fare, but it is weaker in, in than Intel in certain areas. However, in terms of the price performance ratio and what the number of cores and IO and all the other bits and bobs that data centers require, it's impressive. And the bottom line is when you're dealing with uh, data centers, you've got the power consumption, you've got space and all of these other things that you need to take into consideration. And I have to admit from my own standpoint, while it is really fun to see AMD rabbit punch Intel, it is, let's just be honest, just for a moment, it's really fun to see it. But I do really hope that Ice Lake is competitive in terms of price and performance at the end of this year, because it's going to be great for us as end users. It means that we've got more choice, which hopefully means that you continue to have that market innovation. With all of that said, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. What type of performance would you like to see 
out of AMD? What would your ideal chip configuration be? Especially if you're a gamer, are you interested in more processor cores or would you go with an 8 slash 16 thread uh, processor? What type of performance jump would you have? Are you happy with what you've got now? And also when it comes to GPUs, what type of uh, performance would it take for you to do an upgrade? With all of that said, Take care of yourselves and thanks very much for watching. Normal stuff, you can find us on Patreon, which is linked, of course, in the video description. You can also find some Amazon affiliate links and you can also find us on social media, which is also there as well. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.